Okay, today's tutorial will be talking about dictionaries only. Very easy, not going to be included in the practical exam according to my student in the previous tutorial. So um, there are three parts to the question to this part. So like first is this part. Second is basically attempting the anagram question again, but using dictionary and the part is T9. I will not cover T9 today because I feel like it's it's a waste of time. Right? It's a very complicated, it's a question that's easy, but then like requires a lot of typing. So I'll not cover them today. But then I strongly, strongly encourage you guys to actually attempt T9, especially part D, question D, because like T9 is like the kinds of question that, you know, kind of can show up in PE. Although not PE1, maybe PE2. Okay. So I, I guess on those grounds, we can agree. So now uh, for dictionary, I have actually like prepared the, I have, uh, prepare them in several Python tutor tabs for us to visualize the code so you guys can have a better understanding of how that dictionaries work. Will you go through T9 in the future? Um, maybe in the next, like, next tutorial if we have time. I mean, if there's a lot of people asking, then I can explain T9 in the next tutorial or perhaps I can just do a recording explaining T9 and upload it on YouTube. Okay, so then, uh, yeah, all right, uh, okay, no worries, Andy. Just let me know, okay, because sometimes I forgot that I need to cover T9, so just remind me before the tutorial. So, um, yeah, today, the, I think the first part of the exercise is just like to show you, you guys like the behaviors of a dictionary, because I think it's a very good example of how to show how dictionaries behave. And, so yeah, let's just start. This is the first question, right? Part A, da, da, da. So we have a tuples of tuples, where inside is in pairs, right? We have a tuple of tuples, where inside the tuple is just another tuple, but in pairs. And then uh, we can actually convert this to, I think this one is pretty obvious. Now what we're gonna do is that we're actually gonna convert the tuple into a dictionary. Can um, can you type in in the chat Zoom like what is what will the dictionary look like when I convert this tuple into a dictionary? Anyone? Maybe in the Zoom chat. All right, thanks, Andy. So yeah, uh, it will give me a dictionary of like A two B three one four. So basically, what happens here is that the first, when you have a sequence of pairs, a sequence of sequence where the sequence inside are pairs, right? Pairs of two items, two items, two items, right? The first item will be the keys and the second item will be the values. Okay, that will also, uh, so I will print this, right? It will be also applicable for this one where we have a list, right? A list over here. Then, uh, you know, we have this list and the first item is another list. Second item is another list. It's a pair, right? It's a pair, it's a pair. Because it's a pair, we can actually convert it into a dictionary like this, where the first one is 1A and the second one is actually a tuple. Oh, wait, what? Okay, yes, I think something happened. What? Yeah, I'm not so sure what happened. But yeah. Okay, cool. So we have a dictionary here. Oh, okay. Is it possible to do a short summary of dictionary during the tutorial, like before you go, before, like before you go through the exercises? Okay. Um. Okay, sure. We'll go through it. Actually, right. Um. No, actually. Um. Technically, like this is the summary, lah. Like technically, like the first part here is the summary part where we're just gonna show you like how dictionaries behave. Is that okay with you, Colleen? Oh, uh, yeah. 
So actually, yeah, this one is actually our summary part. Lah. So in this case, if you know, right, basically, if you have a sequence, whether it's a tuple or a list, and then inside that list or tuple, right, is basically as, and other sequences, right, that is in pairs, so it's there's two items inside the sequence, then you can convert it to a dictionary. That's, I think, the first characteristic. So you can actually create a dictionary from sequences, whether it's list or tuples. You can even do a mixture. So in this case, this is not inside the exercise, but this is an example where, see, we have a list, and then inside it, there's a list and then a tuple. We can see, like, there's different types of sequences, but then it is still convertible to a dictionary. Yes, the tuple is the key to, of the second pair. Correct. Correct, Rachel. So I think here, one thing that I need to note is that the keys, the keys to a tuple right, cannot be mutable. So it cannot be a list or another dictionary. But then a tuple can be the key to a dictionary because it's immutable. Because the value of a tuple cannot change. Okay. Uh, moving forward. Uh, okay, again, we we'll have this uh, dictionary B again. Okay, I'm just gonna print it. So this is here we have a dictionary one a two three four. Now, um, I think as you guys can guess, um, what you guys can see here is actually a dict B bracket bracket two three. If you guys remember in a list, right? If I have a list A, five, three, or like five, meaning that I'm taking item at index three, item at, yeah, item at index five. So I think we know that the function of bracket is just indexing. So same as other things in dictionary, the brackets are also for a dictionary. The values of a dict can be functions or list, right? Yes, it can. Um, yeah, so um, so in this case, right, we have a bracket of a tuple two, three. It means that it's trying to find a value where the key is a tuple of two, three, which happens to be here, right? There's a tuple two three here, and it is the key for this particular box. Hence, this will give us four. Ta-da. Okay. Any questions so far? None? I'll move forward. Next part is actually an interesting part. Uh, is basically you iterate through a dictionary because remember, right? Dictionary is somewhat like a list. If we talk about last from last week, right? Dictionary is somewhat like a special list where the index you get to set your own index. But then because you get to set your own index, it's very there are special particular ways on how you look through the values inside a list inside the dictionary. So for example, for the first one, right, it's basically the way you iterate through the values of a, of the keys of a dictionary, right, where the keys are this. And then the next one is basically the way you iterate through the values of, the values of a dictionary, which is this. So basically the boxes, right, if you see the boxes, imagine them as, a, imagine them as a, a new, set of list and then lastly we have items which is special which we're gonna discuss later which comprises of every single thing here okay so let us see this the first part first for keys right so i have the value variable key here which is represented in here and i've print key is gonna give me one and two, three. Quite expected, right? You just print and, and everything in the keys. 
Next up, I have uh, values. So I create a new variable val a. And basically it prints all the values. Uh. It iterates through the blue box over here. Any questions so far? If there's no question, thumbs up. Okay, now the next part is the tricky part. Okay, so the next part over here is actually a bit tricky. So, in this case, right, the dict, uh, dict d items will somewhat, right, somewhat, so not exactly, but somewhat convert this dictionary into a list, a list of a list of lists. So in this case, it will create like one a two three four. Actually, not a list of lists. Actually, a tapo. I think if I'm not mistaken, a tapo of a list of tapos. So if you just iterate right for for full in dict b items when you print it the result will be one a two three four this will be the output but then if you see here right, what happens is that there's this k comma v thing so what happens in k comma v is that it actually breaks down this particular pair over here into k and V. So what happens here is that dig B items will iterate through a pair, uh, a sequence of pairs. So pair, pair, and then more pairs. That's this K comma V thing here is that it's gonna break the pair into like the first item and the second item assigned to K and assigned to V. So Okay, this is bit the T. So when I actually try to run the code here, right? Uh, I press next, see? K, it will immediately break like, KV is like 1A. So it, it traces through the first pair. And then I print it. Ta -da. Then like next pair is like this tuple and V. And V is 4, which is this pair. And then I print KV is 2, 3, 4. Any questions for this? If there are no questions, maybe thumbs up again. Must be two variables. Um, for a dictionary, yes. For a dictionary, yes. For the items, what do you mean? Uh? I mean, technically, you cannot have more than two. La. So, say, say we have one, right? Uh, let's try this. What happens if you only have one variable, right? I guess that's the question of the year. Okay, so this is what happens. So for full in dict underscore b dot items, I print full is full is a tuple of one a, so it will convert this into a pair of tuple, and I'll print that, and then uh, again I'll create a tup the second tuple here, and then print it again. And then. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Vichya. Alright. So yeah, so that's what happens if you dig B the items, you just use one variable. If you use two variables, right, these two tuples will be broken down and the, the values inside the tuples will be assigned to those two variables. 
okay so technically right if you have like a, a sequence of like a sequence where inside the sequence is another sequence with like three items right you kind of can assign it to like three variables but yeah let's not go there first now this one is not in the exercise but i want to talk about this because technically we have talked like on how like we iterate through like we iterate through like keys and values and items but we never actually talk about like what if we actually iterate through the dictionary directly like what's gonna happen right uh now i'm gonna let you guys ponder like oh okay okay uh what do you guys think is gonna happen just let us let me know in the zoom chat if you guys don't know just write i don't know okay because like it's better to say something than not say something what do you uh, think well uh, don't be like that like, I, I i cry man <laughs> Anyone want to make a guess? Okay, someone said it's it can be an error. Most people don't know. Any other guesses? I don't know, Sia. Okay. It it will do something. Mm, yes, it will do something. That's why it. I wanna show this lah. Print keys, print item, as you. Uh, Okay, so the answer is that it will actually print the keys. So, see, var is one. It will print the keys. So, with, it will be this, right, will be equivalent to printing the keys. Okay, so I think here I want to make a learning point here is that where, when uh, you treat a dictionary, when you treat a dictionary like a sequence, sequence, for example, example, a for loop, or in this particular part, like if, if x in dictionary, the dictionary will behave as if it's the keys only will be will only show the keys part and why is this important why is this point important it's because sometimes right when you guys sometimes panic you guys want to iterate through the values inside your dictionary not the keys because sometimes what's important is what's inside right not what's outside hashtag uh, love yourself um, sometimes you just like um, iterate through the dictionary and sometimes we don't get the results that we want and then we think like pattern is broken when it's not, okay? When you iterate through a dictionary, what you'll get is actually the keys only. Hence, that's why if you wanna iterate through the values, make sure that you use this one. Values or perhaps use this one. Okay, that's bad. You use this one or you use this one, okay? Don't, don't use this one, don't use this one. But then now you know if you just wanna see like the vec, whether something is inside the dictionary's keys or not, you can immediately use this one. Okay, so remember, if it's only a dict p without anything else, treated like a sequence, it will behave, it will show the behavior of the keys. Any questions? None? Okay, I'll move on. Okay. At this point, if you guys have no questions and nothing happens, I'll just move on. And if you think like I'm going too fast, then that's on you for not telling me that I'm moving too fast. Next part is basically, I think, quite intuitive one. Like, uh, it's the lead, right? So the lead will basically, uh, what happens here, pay attention, pay attention. You see this part over here. When I delete, it's simply like, it's just gonna remove that box. So it's not just that it's going to make it empty, but it's actually like literally removing it from this object realm, object space. So it's completely non-existent. So after you del delete, right, if you try to print, if you try to print, it's gone already. It's not there. Okay, now my question is, if you see here, right, I give a comment, a comment sign here over here. 
meaning that yeah, you know like I, I commented it out because it's an error lah. Why do you think it's an error? Any takes on the Zoom chat? Please, I beg you. All right, both answers are correct. Basically, there's no index in dictionary and there's no key to. So basically in a dictionary, um, even though like, say this is the keys. Okay, I think one thing to pay attention is that dictionaries do have natural ordering, okay? It's not just it's random or orderly random. There's some sort of ordering happening, but then this does not, this thing right does not exist in the realms of dictionary. So if you want to take two, you cannot take two like that law. You must take access it through the keys. So yeah, I think uh, you guys really understood what dictionary is already. So basic, uh, good. So dictionary means that um, you must access it through the keys. If the keys does not exist, if the key doesn't exist in the list of keys, then you cannot do it. Okay, well done. Next, I'm going to back to A. All right, this part is pretty easy. Basically, uh, remember dig A dot keys and dig A dot values. It will give us a sequence of keys and values. Okay, basically it will give us this thing. And then basically you can convert it to a tuple or a list. Like this. It's convertible to a tuple or a list. So, Thing. For color reference, I think uh, I'll print up. Uh, this is blue. See how it's very sim similar. Okay, I think this one is quite self, uh, quite explanatory. Like you can convert it to tuples and list and use it. Any questions? Going once, going twice, no questions, we'll move on. Uh, sorry, so, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about if we change the dig A to become items? I mean, replace the key with the item, then what will happen? Well, why don't we try? So this is what happens. Oh. Actually, uh, that's not so good enough. I, I, I did it more. So, so here we see that we are trying to convert dig a dot items to tuples or lists. So this is the tuple version, and then this is the list version. Pay attention that in this case, right, even when we are converting it to list, right, the contents inside is still a tuple. Yeah. No worries, yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, I think this is interesting. Basically, it's just trying to reverse back, like, reverse engineer things. Okay, moving on. So finally, we uh, come to the last part of part question one. So this one, I think, is the trickiest part. Um, basically, this is dealing with the mutability feature of a dictionary again, which most of you are confused when we are talking about mutability in list. So let's try and break it down slowly for dictionary. So again, we have this dictionary C over here. All right. You see this pointer again? Pointer, pointer, remember it's a pointer. Then I print the dictionary C. All right. And then I make a copy. Uh, of dictionary C to dictionary D, right? And again, both of them are pointing to the same thing. Meaning what happens here is that we do not copy the dictionary. We only copy the address or the reference to that dictionary. We only copy the reference point, but we do not copy the dictionary. Okay, so now we're trying to replace 
take D4 by 9 and take D1, 2 by 9 as well. And then we print dictionary C. Can anyone tell me what's the answer for this in the Zoom chat? What will happen if I print dictionary C in line 7? Any takes? No change to dictionary C, okay. Any other answers? Going once, going twice. All right, let's see what happens. So first we're gonna change the D4 to nine. So this is, this part is the D4, change to nine and it is changed and see nothing happens to dictionary C. Next, we're gonna change dictionary D1. Dictionary D1 is actually this dictionary over here, the what's in the red circle. And then we're gonna change the key two in that dictionary to nine. So, so when I change it, right, it's gonna change this dictionary over here. And if you can see like those two dictionaries, they point to the same dictionary over here. So when I print dictionary C, Actually, the value inside the dictionary has changed, but then I we, I concur that this part does not change because this part is changed. Can I clarify? So one is the key to two, which is the key to three. What? Yeah, I'm not so sure what that means, but thanks for sharing. Sure. Oh my god, okay. Remember when you try to copy a list of lists, right? Remember when you try to copy a list of lists. The list inside, right, when you copy, you don't really copy the list, but you copy the preference pointer to that list. That one part. Uh, here, right, when I try to copy dictionary D. Okay, when I try to copy dictionary D. Oh, like line one. Okay, okay. I'll just explain from the very, from the very, very beginning. Oh yeah. By the way, uh, if possible, right, try to uh chat in the, uh, chat everyone in the everyone group so that everyone can see your question. So like, if I'm talking, answering to your question, right, everyone understands the context. So here I have a dictionary C. This is the dictionary, right? And then to the key one, right, the value to key one is actually another dictionary. It's actually the value of another dictionary, okay? So yes, you can actually store a dictionary inside a dictionary, the dictionary section. Okay, it's possible, okay? So I think everyone is on the same grounds here. Everyone can agree that there's a dictionary inside the dictionary. But then, what's inside this dictionary is not really the actual dictionary, but it's actually it's the, the pointer. Yes, it's the pointer. It's the pointer to the. It's the pointer to the. The dictionary in the object space. Okay. So this is only an address. So inside the dictionary is not the actual dictionary, not the red circle, but it's actually just a pointer that's pointing to the red circle. So when I print, it's print as normal. And then when I try to copy, what happens is that for any primitive value like five or strings, I'll just copy it over and create a new number. But then for this, right, what I copy is actually the pointer. I do not copy the dictionary, okay? I do not copy the dictionary, but I actually copy the pointer to the red circle. So I copy the address. It's like copying an address book from your old phone to your new phone. You don't really like get the new phone, but you just copy the address. So when I change right dictionary D49 like this, right? It's actually already like two separate entities. This one, right? These two parts, right? It's already like two separate things. But then when you actually change the next part, right? Dictionary D1, 2, it's, you are actually referring to the same point. Like you do not read this part, right? Dig D. You do not, you do not actually change this value. 
you're not actually changing these two values. Uh, you're not changing it. What you're changing is actually this value. How? Remember this part, right? Dig D1 is actually this reference pointer. This blue dot over here. These two blue dots are the same. And then two. And these blue dots are the same dot as this one over here. And then, so this blue dot is actually a dictionary. And then this dictionary is being accessed at two, at key two. It means that this, this whole thing, right, this whole thing, right, is actually this particular small box over here. So when I try to assign it with a new value, nine, that, that small box, right, will change to nine. And then when I try to print dictionary C, which is over here, right? I'll try to print law one equals to this dot, or blue, blue dot over here, but I cannot print a blue dot, right? I need to print what is inside this blue dot. So I go to the red circle over here. Oh, it's actually a dictionary two, nine. It, for, it, it forgot what was the content of it when it was firstly created. And then four, five, which is reflected in the print statement here. Ain't it the same being a pointer and being another thing? In a way, it's somewhat the same, but it's different in the way we process things. Like, as you can see, right, the copy part is actually different. Like, if it's numbers, it's not changed, but then if it's a dictionary or a list, it's changed. Why I, why ID Dick C being changed? What do you mean? Huh? Why is Dick C being changed? Because, no, again, remember, dictionary C is not being changed here. Dictionary C, right, the content of dictionary C is actually just, the content of dictionary C is just like one pointer, four, five. This is the content of dictionary C. It's just that Python cannot print this, la. cannot print this pointer. So the pointer will be replaced by the actual object. What happened here, right? what happened in line six over here, right? is that we do not change the dig C or dig D, but we change this particular dictionary here. We change this object over here. That is just like floating in space, floating in this object realm. So when we print line seven, right? print line seven, we print this again. And then it basically inserts the value of this dot here. And it does not have memories of it being changed on at all. Do you understand, Rachel? Does everyone understand? Yeah, the dictionary inside will change as it is not really Dixie. Yeah, because what's inside Dixie is a pointer, not the actual dictionary. So if got pointer, then copy the pointer, and if the pointer got ch changed, both will change. Yes, Samuel is correct. But the actual dict is D, what do you mean? What? No, it's just like there's two separate dictionaries, like there's dictionary C and dictionary D, and there's one extra dictionary that's just floating in the object space. Both points to that. Yeah, I guess. Oh, no, no. Uh, my pointer is just to show that uh, Dick D is the copy of Dick C. So, like, I'm just like the earlier pointer is just like to show that, oh, it's being copied. Should, okay, I cannot remove that anymore. I think I'll just like. Okay, uh, I'm a bit out of breath already. Um, is, is it clear, everyone, regarding the pointer system? Okay, if it's clear, can I get a thumbs up? 
if it's not like please ask it's the same concept as list la last week from last week okay then if there's no more questions then i'll go to the last part which is simply deleting the dictionary so deleting the dictionary is just gone then what's the difference between list and dictionary? Well, the difference is basically, yeah, la, the difference is only like dictionary, the index is, uh, you kind of need to set it on your own and it's a bit more complicated. It's hard to visualize without the Python tutor though. It does take time and uh, Andy, it does take time to visualize without Python tutor, but you must be able to visualize it without Python tutor. So you must be under, you must understand what are the characteristics of Python. You kind of need to learn that and figure that part out. Because if not, you mm -hmm. kind of is quite in a grave danger for PE, for exams. Yes, as EHA mentioned, you kind of need the intuition. How do we change the key value in the case? Okay, uh, okay if you want to change the key value, Say like uh, D four, we are, we are, we are. There are so many chats. Feature. Um. Okay. Uh, how do we change the key value from like say you want to change like the key value of two? Yeah. Say you want to change this value to two, right? You want to change this value to two. Um. Uh, intuitively, right? What you can do is simply like uh. Thing. I just. What happens if you delete the entire dictionary? You delve Dixie. Basically, it's gone lah. If you print Dixie, you cannot basically uh, name it's error. Gone forever already, right? Basically. Yeah. Okay, Wei Chao. Uh, I think this is your answer, right? So, first, what you wanna do is assign, assign uh, the old value to the new key. Next is simply delete the old key. Four is the key, right? Yeah, so in a nutshell, right? In a nutshell, you cannot change the, you cannot change the value of the key in place, but what you can do is actually create a new box and delete the old one. Oh, there's replace, is it? Oh, okay, my bad. Is there a replace? Okay, uh... Oh, my bad. <laughs> replace key. Uh... Is it? Ah, uh, yeah, you cannot change keys, ma. Oh, it's, it's okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, thanks, thanks, thanks for bringing it up, though. I, I really, I truly appreciate it. Like, we learn more. But yeah, keys cannot be changed. Replace is for values. Uh. Okay, so this is the way. Question, because the key two is set tied to key one, so the, the uh, dict D two is different from dict D one. Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, Eugene. Yeah, I suppose. The yeah, key two is set type to key. Yeah, yeah, it's different. It's different. Okay. Anyways, anyways. Um, I think we'll just stop here first because we're quite out of time. So um, again, like we have our favorite code share. Oh, 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 oh. We have our favorite code share. Well, what we're gonna do is now we attempt the anagram question. So the anagram question here is uh, basically the same as your assignment tree, but you need to use dictionary. And another thing is that it's a bit different because our assignment, we ignore the spaces, but in this case, you kind of have spaces. Huh? So you kind of need to figure that part out. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna break you guys into breakout rooms. Uh, there's uh, 
Yeah, I think that's good. I'm gonna break you guys into breakout rooms and I'll give you five minutes to try to attempt anagram. And once you're done, please copy your answer to code share for everyone to see. Okay. Uh, I know there's like there's 12 breakout rooms here, so like there's supposed to be 12 answers. And yeah, maybe 12 answers all are the same, but maybe there are some different answers because there are multiple ways of doing it. And I would love to actually see all your answers so we can learn. Can we sort? Uh, try not using sort. Okay. All right. See y'all. Uh, welcome back. So let's just discuss. I hope y'all copied your answer. Oh, some just have long, long answers. Okay. Let's refresh and see whether some of you did a well done, good job or not. And just uh, again, just try to share it here in case some of you missed the link. If not, let's try to see. Okay, so the first one, okay, some of, since you don't give names, so I don't know who to call, so I'll just like explain maybe, if you guys don't mind. But kudos to who, whoever wrote this. So yeah, let's see, let's see. So, it standardized all the words to uppercase, which is okay. Converts it to a list, and then it creates a dictionary. Basically for X in temporary, basically X in the first word. And you do a counter. Counter means like the variable that counts like, oh, okay, how many numbers are there? And then basically the value of the dictionary is equal. Dictionary, the key in that dictionary is equal to that. Okay. Same case here. Uh, okay, why this? And then like after creating the X, after creating this dictionary here for the first word, basically it does creates, it tries to check whether it's the same or not for um, word two. In fact, actually this part actually can be skipped. You know, this part can be commented out. It will still work perfectly fine. And then if everything passes, it will return true. Well done. Um, I think what this code does not account for is the spaces. Like if there are different number of spaces, it should still be an anagram if the number of characters is the same. But regardless, I think it's a good attempt. It's a genuine one. This one is good. It's an assignment instead of a plus sign, meaning that you don't double count if there's a double letter. So whoever made this, well done. The spaces don't matter, right? Yes, it doesn't, but I, I don't think this code accounts for the spaces like you don't remove the spaces because technically later in your dictionary right you will have account for spaces here I think. And, and yeah so like if the number of spaces in word 2 is not equal to the number of spaces in word 1 it's not gonna be the same okay so yeah well done well done Next part is a bit long. Okay. This is not a space, like, this is empty string. Eh? So like maybe you want to do this. 
There you go. That's just like it's an empty string, not an empty space. Okay, so same, same. Okay, one more thing. Uh, uh, for this part, for this code, um, you don't have to convert it to a list. You can just like do the, like you don't really need to convert this to a list. Uh. Like you can just keep it as a word and it would work perfectly fine as well. Okay. So yeah, I think that's, that's some code improvements that you can do. Maybe like better, better variable names. Like better variable names. Yes. Okay. All right, I think it's good job. The second anagram code. Now, could you explain the count part? Uh, basically, it's a function. La. It's a function. I'll just simplify the code first so it's more readable. Oops. Yeah, so correct. count is actually counting the number of alphabets, not the number of this particular character inside this string. Okay. So yeah, basically that's counter. And then basically this is assigning uh, the key in the dictionary by, by the number of count. I think even then like you can even simply find it even further. Okay, much cleaner. What's X? Where's the X? Ah? I think I replaced the X already. Okay. So yeah, uh, well done. I think going to the next part. Uh, same case, you standardize it to upper. Okay, okay, okay. I want to mention this. Um, please don't use this. Ah. If you already see like the color is changing to blue or anything, please don't use it. Meaning that it's already a reserved keyword. You don't want to use dictionary lab, but you want to use like another name because it will actually create problems for your Python later. You generally want to avoid those special keywords. If X, Y, if, and then this is just a length check because like, okay, this one is wrong because Length may not be the same due to, as Fang Kiang mentioned, due to white space. So say let's say there's no equal sign there. It does a range from zero to length of W1. Okay, this is a bit complicated. Do you do like a list and then a sort? And then this, okay, I'm not so sure what this code is doing. Um, I mean, it's okay, it's a good attempt, but definitely it could be done better. Lah. Like, I think you should try without using sort, lah, of course. Next, I think this one is the most basic one. You standardize the string first. So yeah, um, I think I'll make this one line instead. So you standardize by, by removing all white spaces and converting it to lower. So for those of you who don't understand what's happening here, just try to Google, uh, I won't explain. But this, this one is basically removing the white space by replacing a space with an empty string. And then check if the length is different. I mean, this one is already okay. This one is okay because all white spaces has been removed. And then this one is not necessary because like technically this one is like can do it else because like technically this one is like the opposite of the first one. So you can just do like else. And then yeah, this one is nice. So S1, S2 ticked. I'll simplify it even further. There's another way to create an empty dictionary is by simply uh, 
doing like that, something like this. Cheat code, yeah, just find online. I'm, we're not gonna spoon feed you. Okay, this one is good. I think it checks like, so this is the first iteration. Uh, first, through S1. And this one is the second iteration through S2. And what it does is that it tries to build up the dictionary. So the dictionary works as a counter. It counts like how many A's are there, B's are there, C's are there. If the key is not existent yet, you'll initiate the key by one. If, if it's already there, you'll plus one. And then you check whether both dictionaries are the same or not. So I think this one is a very good answer. All right, whoever wrote this, well done. Uh, thank you for the answer. I, I, I love it. Okay. Uh, lastly is we have this last question, which uh, last question, which is a bit, a tad bit complicated. Okay. This one is, this one is nice. Actually, the person actually breaks it into several parts. Actually, so this one, he has two functions. He or she, sorry for, yeah. Breaks it. In. First, uh, he creates a function frequency that actually like tries to return a dictionary where it counts for all the frequency. And here he removes the white space. And you basically, this one, you can simply like, you can simply like do like return. Um, this works as well. Okay. And this one is actually very good. Huh? Okay. This one is in fact, very similar to if you go search right go you can go search uh the package counter you go search this uh, and it works very similar to this so basically you create a counter and if both are the same then it's true all right so i think we're done with code share i think we're done with anagram so just try to do t9 on your own but then I think you guys did a very good job on Coach Shara, so well done. If there are any questions, just later ask on Telegram. Uh. If not, do Googling, okay? Please Google. All right, so um, that's the end of this week's tutorial. Now I'm gonna stop recording and I will not record the Q&A session for the PE, okay? I repeat, I will not record the Q&A session for PE. Okay, so I'll just stop it here.